Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we have a tournament practice question where we are trying to find the value of a polynomial fraction. And just like most of the videos on this channel, solving this question requires some degree of thinking. So let's go ahead and take a closer look. In the following question, we are given the variable x is equal to the square root of 7 plus 4 multiplied by square root 3. From there, we are trying to find the value of a fraction represented by a polynomial expression on both the numerator and the denominator. Just by taking a look at this question, we know that a direct substitution is out of the question because it's just too problematic. But I still want to do a substitution of this into our fraction, but let's try to turn it into a way that would make the process easier. So let's take a look at this expression of square root 7 plus 4 multiplied by the square root of 3. If I, take a, if I take a look at these numbers, I notice one thing very interesting. I notice 3 plus 4 is equal to 7. And when I do the substitution, I want to do it in such a way that I don't have to involve the square root. In other words, I'm going to have to try to turn this number into a perfect square. So how do I go about doing that? If I want to turn this into a perfect square, means that I have to turn this into a form of a plus b square, which would imply that I have to turn it into something that resembles a square plus 2ab plus b square. And if I take a look at all the numbers that I have here, I can actually turn it into something that is very interesting. I can rewrite 7 to be 3 plus 4 plus 4 square root of 3. And of course, the square root is still there. And from here, I can turn this into 2 square, which is equal to 4, plus 2 multiplied by 2 square root 3 plus square root 3 square. And let's not forget the outside square root. If I, turn, if I write it in this way, you can notice that this is actually equal to a square plus 2ab plus b square. In other words, I can rewrite this expression into 2 plus square root of 3 bracket square square root, which is equal to our value of x. From here, the square root and the square will cancel each other. And I get a nice value of x, which is equal to 2 plus square root of 3 that I can work with. At this point, I can easily substitute x equal to 2 plus square root of 3 into our polynomial fraction and get the answer. However, I notice that the square root sign is still there, and I think if I just substitute it this way, it's still going to pose an issue. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take another extra step just to get rid of the square root. And how do I do that? I can bring 2 to the left hand side, meaning I have x minus 2 equal to square root 3. And uh, from here, if I want to get rid of the square root, obviously what I need to do is take a square on both sides. So x minus 2 square is equal to square root 3 square. From there, the square root and the square will cancel each other. So what I have is x minus 2 square equal to 3. Let's expand out the bracket. I have x square minus 4x plus 4 equal to 3. Or x square minus 4x plus 1 equal to 0. Or x square minus 4x equal to minus 1. And these are the two expressions that I'm going to be using for my substitution since I notice that the fraction itself is, in, is expressed in powers of x. We're ready for our substitution, but first let me copy down the original fraction. I have x to the power of 4 minus x cubed minus 9x squared minus 5x plus 5 over 
x square minus 4x plus 3. And right off the bat, I noticed something on the denominator. It looks very similar to what I have here. So in other words, let's just go ahead and express the denominator in terms of what we have for the substitution. Again, copying down the numerator, I have x to the power 4 minus x cubed minus 9x squared minus 5x plus 5. And for the denominator, I'm going to break it down into x minus 4x plus 1. Plus 2. In other words, I'm expressing 3 as 1 plus 2. And from our earlier work, we know that this part right here is equal to 0. So we can safely conclude that the denominator is actually equal to 0 plus 2 or equal to 2. So let's continue to work from here. Again, I'm going to copy down the numerator. I have x to the power of 4 minus x cubed minus 9x squared minus 5x plus 5 over the denominator which is now 2. Keep in mind the substitution that I have is x minus 4x or x minus 4x plus 1. So as much as possible I'm going to express the numerator in terms of what I have to work with. So let's go ahead and try to do that. On the numerator, I'm going to break it down and I'm going to rewrite that as x square bracket x square minus 4x plus 3x cubed minus 9x square minus 5x plus 5 divided by 2. What I'm doing is simply expressing x cubed into 4x and 3x cubed so that I can turn this into something that I can substitute with my value. So in other words, let's go back to refer to what we have. We have x squared minus 4x is equal to negative 1. So we're going to make use of that. Now I have x squared negative 1 plus 3x cubed minus 9x squared minus 5x plus 5 the whole thing is over 2 and we are going to continue with our substitution before we go any further let me go ahead and correct this mistake there should be an x square here otherwise if it's, if it's just x minus 4x then the whole thing won't make any sense that's my mistake when I'm talking and writing at the same time my brain is just not very good at multitasking Let's continue on our substitution. On the numerator, I have negative x squared plus 3x cubed minus 9x squared minus 5x plus 5 divided by 2 on the denominator. Let's rearrange this thing. I now have 3x cubed minus 10x squared minus 5x plus 5 divided by 2. Again, I'm only interested in x squared minus 4x. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to write this as 3x x squared minus 4x plus 2x squared minus 5x plus 5 divided by 2. Again, I hope you're able to see that instead of writing it as minus 10x squared, I have simply rewrite this thing as 3x mi multiplied by negative 4x, which is minus 12x squared plus 2x squared, which essentially is the same thing. And of course, the purpose of me doing that is so that I can introduce x squared minus 4x into the, into the expression, which is equal to negative 1. Let's continue. Now I have 3x negative 1 plus 2x squared minus 5x plus 5 over 2. From here, if I rearrange this whole thing, I have 2x squared minus 3x minus 5x plus 5 divided by 2. We're now ready to move into the home stretch. 
what I have now is 2x square minus 8x plus 5 divided by 2. So in other words, I am going to continue to work on x square minus 4x. So what I have now is 2x square minus 4x plus 5 and the denominator is still 2. And again, this is equal to negative 1. So what I have now is 2 multiplied by negative 1 plus 5 divided by 2 which is equal to 5 minus 2 over 2 which is 3 over 2. And that's the final answer for today's question. I thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Have a good day. Take care.